Okay, so now I'm going to be building the GUI. So what I'm going to do is go to the contents and jump into the X windowing system. Um, which we need to do with this one here, is it? Yes, that's right. So we've got to build uh, X windows first of all, which is quite a long build. It's about an hour or so, but once that's done, it's relatively easy to um, build. So let's have a look at this. Um, I think is this going to be relatively straightforward to build on the terminal, which would be nice. Right, yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll do this actually on the terminal rather than do it remotely, make it a bit more real, I guess. It doesn't look too difficult to do. Um, it says on my system, the Simlink libcpp that is supposed to point to user bin cpp was missing for some reason. Perhaps it was there or I deleted my mistake. I, never, oh, I don't know. Check if the link is, is in place on your system. So libcpp... So it doesn't look like it is there, so maybe it never existed for him. Yeah, everything there begins with an L. So we need to create that link by running this command. And I just realized I can't copy and paste anymore. So ln minus sv forward slash user forward slash bin cpp and connect that to lib cpp. And there you go. So now we should have CPP. Oops. There it is. So installing X, we need to go to the sources directory. And all the X stuff is under extra. So I'll change into that directory. And you can see all the files that we need are there. Um, Yes, that's right. I don't install the window maker, I don't think. Um, I just decided that was a bit too much. Just getting a, a GUI was enough for me. I think that was right. I actually thought I downloaded that. Unpack the prop list window maker. Yeah, it looks like I haven't copied that on here, actually, for some reason. I'll see if I can sort that out. Um, let's get the X window system running first of all. Um, I'll have to check to see if it's on my server and hopefully it is because then it'll just be a case of downloading onto this machine with links which we've got. So yeah let's get going with X386. So as I say this is quite a big package it's 44 megabytes nearly. So it'll take a minute or so to extract. Oh yes, and then this unfortunately expands into two directories, XC, and I can't remember what the other one's called, so I have to remember there's two directories to tidy up at the end. And as you can see, to build this, we've got to use the old version of GCC, the 2.7.23 version. Oh yes, that contrib. 
directory. So we change into the XC directory. And then we build it by running, I'm gonna time this as well to see how long it takes. It's about an hour or so as I remember. Uh, in fact, we should be able to recall this command. Yep, there it is there. So make, I'll put the time in front. Make CC equals user GCC2723 forward slash bin forward slash GCC and we need to add world on the end. So let's get that going and wait for it to complete.
Okay, so that's finished compiling after just under 70 minutes. All successful. So what we've got to do next is run make install. Okay, now we'll install the man pages. So install dot man. Right, so that's that done. Now we need to create uh, an LDSO conf. I believe the lib and user lib are searched for by default, but because we need to add in the um, X libraries, um, we need to create one. So I might as well put in the lib and user lib anyway. So that seems to be what's happening here. So etc ld.so.conf. So hash begin slash etc slash ld dot so dot conf. Okay, getting started by the keyboard assignments again. So slash lib slash user lib and slash user x11 r6 slash lib hash n slash etc ld dot so dot conf save that run ld config and should run without any errors which it has done 
now we've got to modify the etc man db file so pim etc man underscore db dot com looks like it doesn't exist you see man db dot config oh, that's interesting uh, now I didn't get any problems when I built this I've got no errors mentioned Interesting. Um, let's see if we can find it anywhere. Uh, okay, did that wrong. Oh, that's strange. Um, okay, what I'll do is create it then. Uh, for what it's worth. So mandatory main path slash user slash X one one R six slash man. In order for the preprocessor to find the X one one H files, which you can counter and include statements of source code, create the following sim link. So ln minus s. Let's put a v in. Slash user slash X one one R six include X one one to user include slash x one one that's done often software copies files to user x11 so it doesn't have to know which release of x you're using the sim link has been created so we created it ourselves so ln minus sv slash user slash x one one r six to user x one one so that's done Add in x11 to the path variable. So in looks like recommend doing bash rc, which is sensible anyway. In slash root, oops, slash dot bash rc. Insert export path equals dollar path colon forward slash user forward slash x11 slash bin so let's now as it says suggest log out and log back in again echo dollar path and yeah, I didn't think it would work. Uh, I normally find the bash RC and profile of rather confusing as to what gets activated. So um, maybe that's something I need to look into and learn. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to um, cat dot bash RC and append it to dot profile bi dot profile so that should work there let's log out again log back in echo the path and you can see now that's worked so I'm going to remove the dot bash rc because it's obviously not working 
Um, actually, I think normally in Bash RC you normally have a Source 2 profile so that it gets loaded. Um, maybe that's the way it works off the top of my head. So let's remove that and move on to configuring X. So to configure or to run X, we need to configure the server as we did before. With SUS, I've got a utility to run called SAX, which aids it a little bit. Um, this XF86 config is like a questions and answers type thing. So let's run it and see what happens. XF86 config. And let's just put that behind there. So some information about what's going to happen and what you can do to tweak the results. So let's go through it. So the Microsoft mouse I've got is a, just a basic standard serial mouse. Um, so I don't want to enable it. It's already got three buttons actually. So I'm um, not sure whether the third button will work by default or not, but I don't want to install that or enable it. Don't need to emulate three buttons either. And the device is on TTY S0, I think it is. Um, let's just log in on another terminal and check that is valid. Let's see if that is actually a device. Yes, it is. So let's put that in slash dev slash TTY. TTY S0. Do you want to answer? Oh, uh, you can use the new X. Do you want to use XKB? Let's try yes to that. Right, so now it's going to ask about the keyboard map. So I want something else because the UK board keyboard is not mentioned there. So I'll do none of the above. And it says, so this is now untested. So I've got to choose a keyboard. So let's go with 102 keys. It's actually more than that, but that'll do. And choose one of the following countries. Use the default if nothing really fits. So press enter. So UK is not there. So let's press enter for the next page. There it is there, 19. Uh, we want to set the specifications of the monitor. Two critical parameters of the vertical refresh rate and the horizontal sync rate. So this is a bit I'm not sure about, but um, I know this uh, grabber is capable of quite high resolution. So in theory, um, I should be able to do 10. So I'll try that. If not, I'll have to rerun this and do a low, low resolution. Um, Vertical sync range is probably going to be, well, it's 50 to 60, uh, 50 to 70 is probably more accurate because it is only 60 hertz. So there's no point in specifying any anything higher than that. We must now enter a few identification strings. So enter identification, so just call it monitor, vendor name, I'll just put unknown. And the model unknown. I mean, it could be anything, but um, so this is now the video card. So yes, I do want to look at the database. And now what I've got here is a matrix mystique. So I'm going to look for that. So we're on the A's at the moment. So there's Matrox, Matrox Mystique is just a standard one. So it looks like I need to specify, enter a number to choose, right? So 335 looks like what I need. And it's going to use the SVGA server. So that sounds about right. So I'm going to press enter. Now it says you must determine which server to run. So I'm happy with the SVGA server because that's what um, SUS was using and that seemed to work reasonably well. So I'm 
choose a server from the card definition. I'm going to choose five from the card definition. And the server is run to run is selected by changing the symbolic link X, for example, RM. Okay, so do yes, let's set the symbolic link. How much video memory it's got? No, it's got two megabytes. So let's select four. And this is the definition. Again, it wants to do a similar thing to uh, the screen. So I'll just call it video uh, vendor name. I know it's a matrox. And I know it's a mistake. Uh, clock chip setting. Uh, just press enter if you don't want to clock chip. I don't know it anyway, so I'm just going to press enter. The card definition says do not probe clocks. Uh, I'm going to do no to that. And I'll just accept the modes it's picked. Yes. And I guess all I can do now is to run StarTex. I might have to sync the screen here. Yeah, so it's come up straight away actually. So I'll just sync the screen, see if I can get that more central. Just thinking about it. Didn't really like, oh, it's still not right. It looks like what's happened here is the resolution is not quite right. So the window layout is set for a resolution. Um, that's a lot larger than what's been set. I think it said it had set 800 by 600, so um, that could be something to change, maybe. Um, let's see if the mouse works. Oh, yeah, see, it's scrolling sideways and up and down because the resolution's not quite right. So that looks all okay. I'm going to quit out of this. Um, I mean, ideally, what would be ideal is if I could get the resolution set correctly and actually use the window so I could have the browser and the terminal right next to each other. Um, so what I might do is I might test, see if I can do that to configure that, um, get that going. Let's see if I can quickly do it. I don't think it's going to be something that I'll be able to do quickly. Um, so let's look at the XF86 config and so I don't remember adjusting this when I was testing this um, it was enough for me to get a, a stable screen up and I just carried on to getting Window Maker up and as I remember in fact Window Maker just gives you a basic desktop so it wasn't really necessary anyway but I guess now we're here um, we can have a look at settings alright okay so um, yeah, for setting this correctly. So uh, this is the settings for the um, graphics card. Um, for some reason, it's commented out the video RAM size, even though it asks for that information. So I'll take that out first of all. And then here we've got the monitor capabilities for SVGA. Now, as I remember from when you used to have to edit these um, assuming the these resolutions are defined at the top of the file and it's all about timing on an old CRT monitor uh, where is it near the top of the file not exactly yeah these these mode lines so I can't remember what each of these columns are but for example we go to the first one so these signal settings are frequency rates and pixel sizes for a screen which will display 640 by 400 pixels. So that's the um, 
I can't remember what exactly what frequency this is now. Um, but a combination of all these figures constitutes, um, as you can see, a, a vertical resolution. Uh, sorry, horizontal resolution of 31.5 kilohertz and a vertical resolution of 70 hertz. Um, and these numbers include like the porch values and so on uh, for each scan line. So it can get quite technical. There's calculators you can get. I don't, I presume this is um, still around on the internet where you can um, type in various figures like the resolution you want and the refresh rate you want and it will output these. I'm not sure if there used to be a tool to do this but on a modern monitor it should be able to um, sync up to the standard figures um, being as they are the standard so there shouldn't be any problem with a modern monitor. The screen grabber that I've got uh, that I'm using to record this um, does take an analog input so it's quite likely that um, it may not work on the outset or it'll display the screen a, a little bit funny um, as it will be emulating an analog monitor but certainly for a digital monitor it should be able to lock on to the standard screen I would have thought um, so yeah as I can remember um, the modes that are used, I, th I think, as I remember, these are tested in order, and it, it's the first one that's used by default, and then I think you can switch the other ones from within the application, as I remember, that's how it works. So what I thought I'd do, maybe, is just change this to, if I um, put a hash in there to comment that line out, um, I thought maybe I'd try say 1024 because it'll be a higher resolution but it should still keep the um, characters reasonably big hopefully so let's try setting that 1024 by 768 so that should force it to use that that resolution so if I now start it so yeah, it does look different. Um, just wait, got to wait for the grabber to lock on. I can refresh the screen if I select it. Yeah, okay, so that's pretty good. It's not completely accurate. You can see where the cursor is at the bottom. There's still a few scan lines left, so it hasn't f uh, locked on, or it's probably not the locking on, actually. It's probably the those values that need to be tweaked so that the picture goes down a bit because you can see the top of the um, window here is off the top of the screen. I can't go any higher than that. So it's just, as I say, because it's an analog signal, it's probably just the timing slightly out. It could be probably tweak just a little bit, but given the fact that I can see the end of the window, even though it doesn't actually fit on the screen, um, this window is too big to fit on, in this resolution. I try and uh, wrong mouse. If I try and uh, before I do that, you can see if I move to the edges, it's not scrolling. So the viewport is the same as the visible screen. If I try and resize this, okay, I have to do it from the top. That's why I couldn't pick it up because it is actually off the screen. You can see that window is a lot bigger than the visible screen. So that's probably about the maximum I can have it and keep it visible um, and also looks like the clock slightly off the edges and oh, no, only only very slightly off the edge yeah there's not a lot in it a few pixels so again there may be some adjustment that's required to get the um, parameters to, to display the remaining few pixels that aren't visible on the right hand side of the screen but apart from that it's pretty good it's, it's functional um, again like I said I think there's something wrong with the graphics card certainly when I'm moving the mouse around the screen's shaking a little bit there's some interference um, and even when it's static there's some shimmering around this column here so I, I don't think the um, graphics card is in a healthy state 
um, but it's it's usable for now. You certainly wouldn't wouldn't want to use it for an extended amount of time. So what I'm going to do is to get the um, browser up on this screen. And the reason I'm going to do this screen is because if you do accidentally do Control D to exit, the whole um, X server shuts down. So I'm going to use links on this window just to prevent me from accidentally pressing Control D, which unlikely to happen, but there is a chance. Let's just expand that to the whole screen. So I'll do links uh, HTTP colon Pentium Pro 200 forward slash LFS dash 1.0. Okay, yeah, it, I forgot it was on a different domain, so I need to put the IP address in. Is that taking some time? Okay, I'm not sure why that's hanging. Oh. Done it to the gateway for some reason. Right, that's better. So if I go into the book, how to, there's the book now. So we've got to go down to the, actually this text is a little bit small. Let me come out of this and see if the 800 by 600 works. Um, if it doesn't, then I'll have to go back to 1024. So let me just resync that so I can see what I'm doing. Edit the file again. Go to the bottom. And I'll change this to... Well, in fact, I can just comment that out and put a new line in in case I wanted to go back to this one. So 800 by 600. Save that and to see what that looks like. So, right, I need to refresh the. Yep, that's it. Let's see if that. Yep, that looks okay. The only thing is now the windows won't fit on the screen. Um, Let's see if we can get away with squeezing this up a little bit. Right, this might work, it might not work. We'll see how we go. Again. Right, so let's get the browser up again. So it's a little bit bigger. Um, let's do the vertical as well. Okay, looks like there's quite a way to go. Right, so I need to refresh that. Let's just go back and forward again. So we've got the X window system working because that's what you're looking at. So we go to installing Window Maker. So it says why he chose Window Maker. Let's just go to Sources. Um, and I need to tidy up here actually. I went to resize the screen vertically. Yeah, 
this is not really good, it's too narrow. Um, yeah, I think I'll go back to 1024, it's going to be a bit difficult. Um, hopefully the smaller text will be visible on the screen. Let's wait for this to sync up again, there it goes. Right, so insert, put a hash into that one and remove, oops, remove that one. Right, okay, that's better. So if I put this up here, make it bigger size and let's again get the browser up here oh right okay I forgot again that this one will need adjusting Go to sources here. Right, that's better. I can see the folders that have got, or the uh, directories that have got um, the D mark against them, so I can delete them. So, netkit telnet, we've got that up and running. I can delete that one now. So, let's tidy that one up. Right, so the mouse, the third mouse, the central mouse button does work on this, even though I told it was a two button mouse. So that's good. Um, and we were in extra right. There's only one problem. There's no wheel on this mouse because it's so old. Um, although there were. Oh, no, I'm not sure if there were serial mice with wheels on now, come to think of it. Um, Right, so I need to change into the extra directory and I need to remove, if you remember I said there's two directories that expand when you, um, or are created when you expand the X386 archive, is this contrib and the XC one which we're in. So I'm going to remove both of them because we don't need them anymore. Contrib and XC. Save quite a bit of space. I imagine that XC is probably close to 100 megabytes given that the compressed um, version of it is 43, 44 megabytes. So just give that a chance to delete. Um, the let's go back. The packages it looked like I was missing the actual window maker package so I've downloaded that or not downloaded it I've copied it off the SUS CD which all of these archives because it wasn't particularly something I was um, that bothered about let's use the right mouse um, I didn't update these or, or try to search for these the latest versions I just took all of these straight off the SUS CD um, so I installed the sources for these through YAST and then just copied these files and put them on the server. So what you see is what's been downloaded off of the server. Um, but like I say, what I'm hoping I can do is that I'll create an archive with all these archives in, all these packages in, um, with the original timestamps time stamps as I've copied them from the SUS or as I've downloaded them so most of them will be dated 99 some are 98 and as I've already mentioned there was one that was dated 2001 I think it was and um, the reason for that was that text info actually the reason why that was uh, had a newer timestamp was mentioned um, so yeah so it'd be easier if you did want to have a go at this uh, rather than you spending time and it's quite a bit of time uh, to go and ferret around uh, for packages if you did want the new ones. If you just wanted to use the SUS ones, which as 
you know, probably understand. I haven't tested. I've only used the ones I've fetched off the internet, the latest files. Um, you should be able to just get them off of Sue's disk. That that wouldn't be too onerous just to find the files and um, uh, install the source files and then just copy the tar files from that directory that I showed you. So, um, 